Welcome to Research Business Daily Report. And of course, we are sponsored and supported by people who go to patreon.com forward slash rbdr, which we as a group thank. Good morning and uh, welcome to what has become kind of RBDR's annual look ahead at the Super Bowl commercials for the coming weekend. And we are pleased today to have from around the country, on the West Coast, David Paul, who is the CEO of Engages and Dial Smith, and he's out in Portland. Um, decision Analyst Executive VP Bonnie Jansen is down in warm Dallas, where she tells me it's 47 degrees. And out east in New York, um, the founder and the president of Brand Keys, Robert Pasikoff, and he says it's 13 below with a wind chill, but that's our temperature here in Chicago, so no complaining from anybody. Uh, gentlemen and ladies, thank you very much for joining me this morning. I truly appreciate it. We're going to try to do this a little differently this year, which is to get in and out of subject matter pretty quickly. And so let's start with a question about how, if at all, this year's Super Bowl advertising is perhaps different than it may have been last year or in the past. David, why don't you give us a start? Oh, good morning, Bob. Yep, thanks for having me. Um, in my opinion, there's not much of a change this year over last year. Um, I'm seeing the trend of humor and heartstrings, as we tend to usually see. Um, there are some really kind of emotional tugging at the heartstring spots. Uh, there are some really, really silly um, spots where humor is definitely missing the mark. And then there are some where you do get a really good laugh. So uh, I wish I had a better answer. But for me, at least from what we're seeing in pre-released ads, uh, it, it looks like um, pretty standard formula being repeated. Bonnie, you're nodding your head in agreement. Yeah, I agree with what David is saying. It looks pretty similar to what we've seen in the past. And in a lot of ways, it's the same kind of formula we see happening in Hollywood where, you know, you've got a winning formula for a movie or a TV show. And so it's replicated. You know, these are very expensive ads that I think the going rate is 5.25 million. So, that, you know, they're not going to take a lot of big chances. And that appears to be perhaps what happened this year at least what we've seen so far. And Robert, I didn't see a, a nod or a shake, so wh where are you coming from on this question? Well, you know, we tend to think of things a little bit differently in terms of effects. So it's $5.3 million at a 30-second spot. You want to see something happen, whether it's funny, pulling at the heartstrings, or, or straight advertising. Um, we've seen that Based on the based on the studies that we've done on the pre-release commercials, that more of them are more brand engaging than we've seen in the past. I mean, most of the time, you we see a, an average of about twenty five percent of what becomes effective for the people paying all this money. Uh, we're seeing something closer to forty percent. So. Creative style notwithstanding, ultimately you want some ROI on, on these kinds of investments. And I think more people are going to see more this year than they did last year. Well, if I may, I think uh, this year I would have suggested that the NFL and the uh, the White House had gotten together to have a full employment bill for celebrities. I mean, I don't think you can actually find, uh, you know, I think there are two ads that we saw of about 25 that didn't have a celebrity someplace, um, you know, as a, as a format and as a style. Um, that may be something that agencies feel is absolutely necessary. Um, my reaction was that in about half the instances, it was appropriate. Well, it's interesting. Actually, um, the Coca-Cola ad, which I understand is going to be aired right before 
um, the Super Bowl begins, <clears throat> is actually the one that I thought was really interesting. It's pretty different. It's animated, and it's all talking about diversity, and I thought it was very well done, and I think it's one of the standout ones that I really like the messaging, I like the um, the strategy, I like kind of the entire package, and obviously that's what they were going for. Okay, Robert? Um, I had that on my list, the Coke, but that's not the one I think was the best. I think the uh, Stella Artois commercial with Sarah Jessica Parker and Jeff Bridges, iconic TV film folks who were known for iconic drinks, coming in and turning around and going, no, no, I'll have a Stella Artois. I think that, A, it's something that actually focuses on why you want to drink beer, as opposed to just listening to Bob Dylan sing. Um, and I think that it's got legs. I mean, you can, um, wow, you know, I could pull John Hamm in and have him not order an old fashioned. Um, or virtually anyone from uh, Game of Thrones and not have them order mead. I mean, there, there's, there's a raison d'etre, there's a strategy to what they did. Uh, and it was done well, it was, done, it was amusing, it was entertaining, but most importantly, it was brand engaging. Okay, David. Yeah. Well, not surprisingly that those two ads were mentioned. We fielded a survey last week with the pre-released ads and of the top three, it was Coca-Cola, Stella, but the number one spot, at least in the ratings from our survey, was Budweiser. Um, and they, year after year, often come out in the top spot. They do have a formula for tugging at the heartstrings. This year, they started the spot with humor, with the dog's face and the, the flapping um, gums, and you didn't really know where it was going to go. And then they moved to the iconic sweep, and then it ends with the socially responsible message of of wind power, and that really seems to have resonated with our group. So I think as a formula, that is a really sharp formula. Personally, um, I love the Stella ad, um, it, it cracked me up. And one that we didn't get a chance to test because it came out later, um, but is, is my, my favorite so far, is uh, the Amazon uh, Echo Spot where they feature all the fails. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily the best ad ever, but it literally had me laughing. So I, I appreciated what they were able to pull off with that. Okay. And you're a tough audience, but David, I can, I can speak to you <laughs> from, from oh, personal God. experience. I'm brutal. <laughs> okay. Now let's finally touch upon what might be the biggest swing and a miss. Bonnie, you want to go first? Well, I will say that I think from a standpoint of just um, a little bit, perhaps kind of a uh, has a bit of a creepy factor is the pr the Pringles ad where we have the um, the device the sad device that is talking about it's obviously listening into a conversation and then it's saying it it can't build it can't taste it can't stack Pringles and taste it so it's definitely getting at privacy and so it's it's um it's Definitely you get the brand, you see the Pringles cans all over the place, but it's a little bit on the creepy side. So I will be interested to see how that one plays out with um, the audience at the Super Bowl. Okay, and David, what did the survey say about the worst? Um, one word, Colgate. The oh. close talking Colgate ad was uh, at least so far with us, um, uh, not liked at all. Um, I personally happen to agree. I also take real issue with the Devour ad, and I don't know what they're going to edit that down to to air on television because what they pre-release to generate some buzz is certainly not airable. Um, but uh, I think I think these days that's just uh, a little too distasteful and could well be a miss even from, from a brand standpoint. But but the survey so far says Colgate. Okay, and I trust that Robert's going to have a little bit different angle. What, what's yours, Robert? Well, I would look at it from effect. I will say that when we, you know, tested the commercials, um, the the Colgate ad comes up with a real sense of invasion of personal space, which, of course, that's what it was created to do. Uh, the problem is, is that the most Americans want, you know, two and a half feet between human beings when they when they communicate. Uh, 
I, I thought the I thought the um, the uh, planters commercial kind of left me. It's like they had special effects. They they had a celebrity. They think that you should eat planters peanuts instead of kale chips. And mm -hmm. I think most people watching the Super Bowl are eating planters peanuts instead of kale chips. And um, I, I don't think that it uh, it had much effect for um, for the brand. Everyone knows it. They know what it is. They know when they serve it. I it seems like a bad strategy. What we bid ado, I'm going to give each of you a chance. Any other closing thought that we haven't touched upon um, so far that you think is important about the, these ads, Robert? Why don't you go first? Well, the one, the ones that I, the ones that I liked. I mean, there and there were a handful that uh, both tested well and that I kind of resonated again from a behavioral perspective. Were things that didn't just sit there and try and entertain. I mean, what they tried to do was make a point about the brand. Um, I, I thought that one of the ones that that did it extraordinarily well was the yellow tail uh, mm -hmm. tastes like happy. I mean, the ability to be able to take the visuals and actually translate it to what seemed sensual uh, in terms of taste, I thought was I thought was pretty incredible. Uh, the other thing I'd just like to say, uh, we finished our, our, our annual loyalty and engagement index. We looked at the snack category as we always do. Doritos was at the top. I am absolutely convinced that they could just take the bag and put it up for 30 seconds and have the same kind of market effects that they have, uh, you know, hiring, uh, you know, hiring an expensive agency. It's an incredible brand. Um, I think that when you look at what um, Pringles could have done, um, where they have this built-in capability now to take potentially 20 different flavors, mix and match them into 300 and some combinations, that's something that uh, people can actually do with their friends and come up with those flavors, like mixing and matching jelly beans. Um, I think they missed with the uh, pseudo Alexa machine and, and the, the potential of privacy and things like that. But you take that notion and then you take the notion of what Stella did being the alternative to your cocktail or glass of wine or something else. And I think those are the real opportunities to Robert's point to, to connect people with a brand in a way that when they're actually out in the world, they can have this recall of fun and interesting ways to use it. I don't want the cocktail, I'm gonna grab a beer, let's do a Stella, or I've got five cans of Pringles here and let's figure out some fun ways to put them together. So I think that kind of build your own adventure kind of angle is, uh, is interesting and it, it connects people to the brand and lets you enjoy it just in everyday life. Okay, Bonnie, well, wrap it up for us. And I would say from my perspective, um, everything that the we've said here on the panel, I think is true. And it's really all about integrated communication strategy from the brand and what they're trying to do, how they're trying to compete. And and David Robert are totally right that it's a, you know, Pringles does have a great story and we've heard over and over from consumers what they're trying to do is customization and personalization from your car to your burger to your home to everything. That's what everybody wants. And so if you have a product or you have a brand that allows for that, being able to really show that and showcase that is the way to go. And um, and I think for Doritos to be able to have Chance the Rapper and to have the Backstreet Boys together, it's going to be hilarious. And I think a lot of people are going to love that. So I think it's that integrated strategy and being able to tie things together where we have social and we have digital and we have the TV together. And we have a lot of ads that have already had, I think Budweiser has already had some crazy number of, I don't know, 20 million views or something. So they're, they're going to get a lot of um, play out of these ads for a long time. It's going to be good for the brands. Okay. Uh, my thanks to Bonnie Jansen of Decision Analyst, to Robert Pasikoff of Brand Keys, and to David Paul 
both of Engages and Dial Smith. Uh, that's your Research Business Daily Report. We hope you have a great weekend and enjoy the advertising, if not the game itself.